Thursday. Um, I hope it's pleasant wherever you're looking. I look out Bill's window. It looks like there's daylight where he's at. And if some of you, it's uh, two o'clock in the morning, like um, with Rajat. So thank you all for logging on early and late. Today we have uh, two wonderful artists, brand ambassadors. Both um, we have Stella and Sylvia, and I think the cut the, the the coin was flipped, and uh, Stella won. So Stella's going to be first. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> so Stella and Sylvia, welcome. Thank Hello. you. Hello, everyone. Thank you. You know, one thing from the last week and the week prior, and I think it was uh, really um, noticeable with, with Anna Marie, is uh, if you would like to paint along um, with the artist, we'd love to show and see your work at the end of the presentation. It would be fantastic. So Stella, you're first up. Okay, lucky me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. I am. I always feel so privileged to uh, participate and to be part of this incredible family. I love every one of you, and it's it's been a great journey. Um, thank you. Uh, and I will present my job card, and I'm sure Letty will will um, put the my, my job card on on the chat. Um, and. Um, not only presenting my dot card, but also how I choose my colors and maybe I can help you um, choose your colors because I love color. Color is my life and in my, um, you know, like Monet said, <laughs> my dread in my life. I, I love color, I wear it, I uh, paint with it, I do jewelry with it. I uh, my hobby is doing jewelry and and uh, I love the Primatex because they all are made for those beautiful beautiful uh, minerals and, and stones. Uh, and my my dot card was actually made one of the very first. I I don't know John has to say, but I believe it was somewhere in my records is 2016. It's one of the very first dot cards that were were made and at that time I chose the 18 colors which I still love very much but now um, there's so many more that I am including them nevertheless all these 18 colors still kind of stay like my my basic palette and I add all the time something something new um, many of them and uh, I made, okay, I mean, I, do you all have it or should I read it? I have Hansa yellow light, Hansa yellow medium, pyrrole orange, uh, pyrrole scarlet, um, rhodonite genuine, carmine, um, cobalt violet deep, yellow ochre, um, this is, one of the very favorite of everybody, Quinacridon burn orange, and I finally learned how to say it properly. Then, then I have, uh, oh, uh, got, uh, got, is, how do you pronounce it? Gotite, Gotite, is it Gotite? Brown, I, I never mm. know how to pronounce it. Uh, but anyway, I love it. Well, I think it's Gotite, but I'm not sure. I think it's Gotite. Is it go John? Please, John, help. Yeah, I would say it the same way. Go tight. Go tight. Go yeah. tight. Go tight. Uh, then I have um, uh, my favorite blues: ultramarine, cobalt, cerulean blue. Then, then I have sap green. I have uh, uh, cobalt turquoise, um, and um, green gold, monglo, and the last one is lunar violet. All of them I still use very much. I chose them. I too bad I, I just arranged my outside studio and a lot of things are inside, outside. I don't know where it is to, to show you the big dot cards that Daniel Smith has, how I chose the colors. It probably took me about three, four weeks to play with the colors and, and choose 
from all these amazing, beautiful pigments to choose the 18 that I do. And then Daniel Smith honored me with two master um, sets, which are also my colors from my dot card. One set, I chose it as a very basic set because I do believe in, in those six colors. You can produce a lot of colors to, to play with and, and uh, depending on the intensity, you can, you can use them in, in variety of, of values. I did, uh, uh, I did here, if I can show it. Okay, that is my, uh, my 18 colors. And that is something that I always um, um, suggest to all my students to do. For me, it's a very important thing to know my colors. Um, I, I have them here, I cut them from the, um, from the brochures. Uh, and the information on the brochure is, is beautiful and very important to me. The transparency, the granulation, the staining power, the light pass, pass, um, light fastness. Those are very, very important things for me. To know my color is my, I, I always say, is like the builder knowing their tools. For me, paper. Um, brushes and paints are my physical tools, and that is a very important how I know them. So how they how they use them, I don't want to sit three times uh, in front of my palette and thinking where to put my brush. I need to know my palette perfectly, and that is how I do. Um, uh, I I do this, but I'm not a big swatch person. <laughs> I really what I do mostly. And I will show you tons of papers. I do play. And I just splash color. I mix them. Most of my, my old paintings that never became a paintings on the back is my play room. Uh, and um, uh, many of you would say playing is waste of time, waste of paper, waste of money. No. I make cards from all of this. There are tons of cards that I make. And um, those are the cards that all my friends receive. This is a viewfinder that I, when I go, you know, I use it as a viewfinder. And there are tons of tons of use, um, uses for, for the paper. Playing for me is the most important thing to learn my colors. The biggest philosophy of, of knowing and painting with the colors is how much pigment and water one puts on, on the brush. There is no way anybody can teach it that. The only way you can learn it is, is to play with. Um, and here is my palette of my, it never, believe me, it never looks so clean, but I cleaned it specially for you. <laughs> and, my colors are all, I arrange my colors from um, light to dark and from warm to cool. The, the characteristic of colors, for me, the most important thing is, is uh, temperature. And if you notice, uh, all my colors are um, different temperatures, like Hansa light and Hansa yellow gives me beautiful range of, of um, warm and cool. Hansa light is very cool, one of the coolest. And um, Hansa me um, medium, yellow medium, is much warmer. Those two colors, of course, are semi-transparent, um, but it depends how, how one uses it. Uh, if I usually, m most of my colors, um, I choose them to be one pigment because I do believe that one pigment colors mix very well. The ones that uh, are derived from many pigments do not need to be mixed. We can use them all just single from the two. I am a mixer. I love to mix my colors. So um, then, I, then I have the yellow ochre uh, and gutite, is it, was it gutite brown? 
Uh, and um, when I couldn't burn orange, those are my earthy tones. The, the, the same thing is with my red. I love red. Red is one of my favorite colors together with the blues. So with the red, I have an orange red and, and really this is the pile orange, which is very much poppy red, wonderful for my flowers. And then I have a uh, pile scarlet, which is, is more red than orange. Then I have the rhodonite. I love the rhodonite. It's not granulating. Um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful, cooler color. And then carmine, which is deeper. Uh, carmine, I replaced my um, um, alizarin crimson with, because alizarin crimson is kind of more... Um, Fugitive. And it's fugitive, I, I, yes. And I um I love that color and I miss it tremendously because it 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 was the be best mixer and I know why all the masters and everybody loves a lizard and crimson. I miss it very much, but for me light fastness is is important. So I um use the carmine and permanent. Uh, permanent um, alizarin crimson also, but it it there are a lot of of pigments in that, uh, which I don't know. It's I go back and forth, and then I have the deep violet um, uh, cobalt violet deep, which I um, I like very much. Um, it's uh, if I mix it with the rhodonite, it produces it produces um, kind of a beautiful. Um, beautiful and with or with a cobalt which produces a beautiful um feathery violet which reminds me of cobalt violet a color that i don't use that much anymore because it it's you use it very sparingly and then it, it dries in the in the tube i haven't used it for a long time uh so uh for me that those are all of these colors that I choose, uh, I choose them because of their mixing qualities. If I if I mix uh, lemon yellow, I I wish I am a flower painter or a marine painter, so or or a portrait painter. So to choose colors that I only work for for that um, um, kind of paintings, unfortunately. I paint whatever touches me and whatever the mood of the day is. So I I use a lot of colors. Uh, and uh, uh, ultramarine blue is a very transparent color. And I love to use it to produce with two, only two colors. You can produce so much. And those are my yellows and blues. Uh, even with cerulean, even if I mix two opaque colors, I still can can make um, uh, tons of greens. And depending how um, how much pigment I put, I can use them um, in in different values. I can make them bluish green. I can make it make it yellow green. So that is for me. It's a very important quality of of the colors. Um, granulation, I I love very much because I'm not a very texta, a, a texture painter. When I um, use um, granulating color, that that gives me the texture that I, I need. So um, recently I am really playing a lot with uh, um, with uh, Primatex, and that is what I love them very much for, for their granulation. Uh, there are some colors and which are, um, have granulation, some which not, and, and also transparency, very few of them. I have to share something that I do, and I hope that will help you choose your colors. I have a lot of brochures here and what I did because of my learning my colors. That is the most important thing for me. Uh, what I did, I took few brochures and I uh, 
marked all my transparent colors. Those are all my transparent colors. So um, if I go to the to the sign lab, which I love very much that too, but I don't want to be on the computer. When I paint, I have I have this this uh, brochures around me, and I just open if I choose a color depending on what I'm painting. So this is the transparent one. Then I have a transparent and non-granulating. That is a very important thing for me to know. I use the transparency, but I like also non-granulation. So I mark the colors which are transparent, non-granulating. I mark the uh, colors which are transparent and granulating. So for me, it's I'm a very visual person. So when I open my brochure, I can immediately um, see which one, what I need for, for the specific project I'm work, working. Non-granulating, all of the colors that are, oh, and I, I didn't show you on the other side, of course, are the, the Primatex and uh, um, the luminescent and iridescent. It's interesting that all of the interference co um, uh, colors are actually transparent and non-granulating. So that knowledge for me is incredibly important. So those are, um, those are the uh, transparent colors and non-granulating. Then I have another one that is uh, all, pigments, uh, all pigments made from only one pigment and pigments that are made from many pigments. For me, that knowledge is incredibly important, and I, I suppose the teacher in me uh, talks a lot about this. I think painting is my fun, and teaching is, is my passion. So I really believe that uh, um, knowing color and learning color is incredibly important. Uh, for me, color <clears throat> is the most emotional part of the painting. Uh, we people are very affected by the colors. If you ask interior designers, they will tell you uh, that red is exuberant and, and uh, um, you know, courageous color. Blue is very soothing, so it's, it's green. Purple is kind of a more moody color. Yellow, it's a sunny, joyful color. So color has incredible value in a painting. Also, we people are very affected by the temperature of color because we like the warmth. So warm and changing warm and cool color in a, in a, in a painting for me is another thing that um, make the viewer go around to your painting and stay with your painting if you give it enough um, uh, information in that emotion in with the warm and cool and play with that just like in the music the harmony the harmony of the painting depends very much about the the color um and that is what we do as artists we want the viewer to look at our painting and stay with us so having yeah maybe the teacher is i'm sorry maybe the teacher is talking more than the artist in me. <laughs> anyway, so I will show you something very quickly uh, how um, I play in oh here yeah, are some paintings that I put in all of them uh, you you can see that oh, you, you don't see much about the color but they are even in my darks because I like to mix my darks very much to get, to be colorful. So those are all play papers that I play with that, as you see, there are not many of them are uh, signed, but that is where I really learn, learn color. And of course my fa favorite boats. Uh, I, that is one of my very favorite things. Then, then uh, important thing for me is to have the brilliant color and then to have to be able to mute the color. So all the, the my colors, that is how I have chosen them, that they will express, they will express it, it in, in, yeah, you hardly see the, in the camera, a lot of the, 
the colors, but for me, it's important to express the mood. Um, the emotion for me in a painting is the most important thing, and that is what I strive to, to express, emotion. Uh, and those beautiful colors, that is exactly what, what it gives me, that amazing emotion. Um, I will just show you, I, unfortunately, I get to stand when I paint. Uh, I will show you very quickly uh, what, I, what I do and how I paint it and how I use my, my colors. Uh, I love, um, and I'm sure you all love um, Cannon Beach. What I remember very much from Cannon Beach is kind of a something, um, you know, those, those rocks that go in there and this huge big rock that, that go out and it's something like, like that. And come down into here and here is another little rock. So that's is, that's is, um, Cannon Beach. Uh, how I use color is I usually start with the light one. I love my um, my um, um, gold, um, green gold, which in a sunny in a sunny time, if you go there in there, you will see this this rock and that that green. Then stop green is something that will give me the and I mix my colors. I mix my colors on the paper. I do not um, uh, over mix them. When I did this, when I did this, I wanted to have the dark, the darkness. I <laughs> used the, the full intensity of the color. I wanted to go and to push it to see how far they will go, how dark they will be. But of course, this is only one color that I can create between, this is every color in my palette mixed with every one. Um, and that, that gives me the, the really the intensive colors. But of course, one can go and only we took of those colors produce probably 50 in the same, in the same um, hue uh, of, of colors. Uh, the, like I said, the, the, the um, um, characteristic of color is hue and intensity and um, value and temperature, which for me, the temperature is the most important thing. And my colors, like I always talk about, the most important thing is temperature. So here will be my, 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 um, the um, cobalt, uh, co cobalt um, will give me the, the, green the the coolness of the green and of course right into here i will um, mix and do the darker part of this rock which will give me and my moonlight of course i will use a lot of my moonlight i let the mix mix on the paper that moonlight what... moonlight you mean moon glow. Mm -hmm. oh, moon oh glow. i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. When yeah. I paint, I'm not in my in my left brain. Thank you, Angela. Good to keep, yeah. me, on, keep me on track. Um, so here is going to be my rock. Of course, that is way too light, and I will go on more on the darker side and mix a lot of these colors, which give will give me a lot of that texture that I need for for my um my rock um a lot that, of, that red that red was it carmine that is no that i i use the um rhodonite genuine ah, okay okay yes thank you. and i i will um for sure go and glaze it more and put more colors and now the the very interesting thing with the colors is that um i can i can go many times into the color and not produce mud, which is something that we always worry about. Uh, and that is depends how we use the color. 
uh, with the intensity that we put on our brush and also how much water and how much um, uh, pigment we, we put there. Right here, I would like to have a little sunny side on that and I will put a light color. This little, little rock will have a very much dark and uh, and uh, here dust dust rocks will be I will put them on the shade so I will put a lot and mix my uh, I'm mixing a lot of my darks with the uh, quinacridone burnt orange ultramarine and um, uh, cobalt and cerulean in in to produce this this uh, shadow side of of them and I of course I love my cerulean I include it always in there I love that that is the granulation I really would like to <clears throat> to have in in that uh, rock uh, right in in here I would love a little of the sun coming behind that behind that rock and a little of sun coming on the top of, of this rock. So that's his end a little into here. Here it is. Now with all these colors, and I, for me, it's important to grade them. Uh, I can always go into the wet, wet paint and put more darks because this rock, I like to be way more dark into here and mix them. And it also has, like I said, that, um, um, granulation. That is what I will will let it happen because of all of the um, uh, the granulation of the colors without me doing too much. Now, since I put all of this grayish colors, which I absolutely love, um, and uh, one, one of the important things for me is the, the complementary colors. I have all of this brownish and yellows, and, and I probably will go way more dark on this. My paintings always happen at the very end. And what will happen if I put in that water, look what happens if I put in that beautiful, this gorgeous blue, and of course, this blue I will put into the, the rock and connect all of this. So look at the, the, the comparison. And for me, complementary colors are very important. Uh, it is, I don't use that very often, but here it is. If I start from the yellow, you know, we know the complementary colors. I also like very much the split complementary colors to use them uh, in a painting. That that knowledge for me, it's very important. And what would we say if we put a little sky? In little sky, I would like to put with, with cerulean. That is how I play. I do not, I, I play most of the time and all my paintings are more play than anything else and that is what i enjoy the most stella can yes. i read a comment here from jose leon he says yeah so much knowledge and experience from stella camfield i'm like a sponge right now trying to absorb as much information as i can who, isn't who that is cute that? who is that jorge leon jorge leon Oh, William, thank you. Thank you. I, I'm, af I'm okay, afraid. Yes. I'm afraid more teacher talks than, than the artist, but that is what it is. And I, of course, I will put a little more of cobalt blue. Um, sky, it's um, something that I love very much. And I always say, um, that those blues, I will use them, that I went a little to the end of the paper, but um, sky moves for me. So that's why I like to 
move my brush and goes from dark to light, of course. Another thing that I, it's a secret and I never tell my students to say it, but I always put a little yellow <laughs> on the horizon. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So the, don't ever say it. No. That's my secret. I do believe that and nobody's little... listening to us. Nobody's listening to us. <laughs> I, know. I know. Little yellow on the horizon is always fun. So that is how I paint. And of course, um, the 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 paper has a, has a wonderful way of of giving me texture together with the granulation of of my colors. Um, cerulean blue, it's really um, very, uh, it's really funny. Ashley, you and I see it as cold. And that is something that is always so interesting that then, then we all see color very differently. I always think cerulean is, is, cerulean is, is, uh, cerulean is uh, um, cool. And everybody says it's a, uh, it's warm. It, it, everything cool. is where you and how you um, really compare it to. For me, the, the, the comparing that, it's the most important thing. What do you compare it with? If I compare it with my blues, and I use also Indian throne blue, I love very much. I love the king's blue. I mean, there's so many blues that I, I like more and I put on my palette when I paint. Uh, and that is if I compare my cerulean to my cobalt, it looks to me cooler. In in ultramarine, of course, is warmer than than cobalt. So that is how I I see it. I I don't know if I am right or or wrong. Um, when I come to my darks, so Stella, uh, yes, we're at the the bottom of the hour. Oh, we are. Yes, yes, we are. Oh, I'm sorry. Gosh, I forget. Myself. No, it was wonderful to watch what you do in 30 minutes. That's very nice. <laughs> I love your explanations of things. Very nice. Thank, Thank you. I'm I sorry. Really I'm sorry, Sylvia. No, 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 no. Look at the, tele the, the clock. Not a problem. Okay. So as, okay. as Stella was saying, Stella was, has been a brand ambassador for a long time. She's one of the first several brand ambassadors and among the first dot cards we ever did and absolutely wonderful. And now we will follow with Sylvia, who is our newest, one of our newest brand Yes. Members. So <laughs> and that, Sylvia, that's the full <laughs> circle, right? Full circle. Yeah. 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 Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Sylvia. Thank Glad you very you. much. You're very welcome. Thank you. I'm very Stella. happy to be part of the family. It's something, it's a dream. And it's great uh, to have thank you, you John. <laughs> yeah. You are so welcome. Very good. It's great to have all of you. Yes. Yes, yes. So now, if you'd, like to, if you'd like okay. to start, I'll make sure you have as much time as yes. possible. Yes, okay. I will switch camera. Oh, my God. Always, okay. That's it. So I don't have uh, in my hands my dot card yet, but uh, I made it. And um, first thing, choosing colors were... This wasn't easy, <laughs> but uh, first first thing I thought I have to this 18 colors, um, I have to do all my paintings from the beginning to the end with this 18 colors. That's the way I started uh, to think about it and to choose uh, the colors that I have here now uh, to me. Temperature is something very, very important. And then, and then uh, I thought also that I had to have, among these 18 colors, a uh, reduced palette to paint outside or even to travel with so it would fit like here. And um, for this, first of all, I need to show you uh, what are the most important colors to me. It's not favorites, it's favorite and important. It's um, Kinakiridon Rose. 
it's the yellow, uh, the Hansa yellow medium. And uh, this color, iridescent electric blue, because with uh, these colors, I can build a lot. Like uh, here, wow. Here is, a, I will show you before, and then I start. Um, I made several combinations. So my dot card would be harmonical among uh, one color among the other. So, and uh, also doing this is something that uh, makes me know better each color. So one important thing, granulation, light fasteners. This is, um, this is the, the items that I always tell to my students that you don't have only to choose uh, mixing colors like blue and yellow, I will get green. It's, it's not only this. We have to think about transparency. We have to think about light fasteners. We have to think about granulation because all of this will have an impact in your final results. So this is important to know, uh, to be aware of what do you want and then what colors are you going to choose? So, as I was saying, these colors, if I have, and I love this iridescent electric blue because it gives such a vibrant result. I was um, these days in a festival here in Brazil and I showed uh, the students the iridescent um, electric blue and everybody was like astonished to see how uh, vibrant and beautiful this color is for skies. And it's not because it is luminescent because it doesn't look like a hobby color. It, look, it looks like a vibrant, beautiful color. So uh, this color with pinacridone rose, I have a beautiful violet. So, also, French ultramarine with the same queen rose of beautiful violet. And here, this uh, electric blue with the Hansa yellow medium, I have a beautiful green. Otherwise, this is very vibrant. If I want something a little bit uh, less saturated, I can, uh, I can mix this Hansa yellow medium with French ultramarine. So this is very important to me, uh, having all these colors so I can get everything I want from them. Now, uh, what about the neutrals? So here, pyrrole red as the second red. I call uh, kinacridone rose a kind of red here. I have I I I have pyro. It's not this one. Pyro red here. So if I want to warm it a little bit, I just add a little bit of a Hansa yellow medium, and then I have this color mixing with French ultramarine. I will have I will have a range of uh, neutrons. So that's the way I work, like mixing one with the other. So uh, I can build a whole range of colors um, to get what I want. So after this, I have, oh, the duochrome ocean, oceanic that uh, it's, uh, there is a kind of gold in it and turquoise too. And this to paint the birds that I'm now working it's gorgeous. It, it, it is beautiful. I showed you in the previous um, live. I have the I have the the watercolor here just to explain myself about this uh, uh, the dual chrome ocean it gives this beautiful light. So I think it's gorgeous. I love it. 
And then there's uh, colors that are so, oh my God, so is, so is it. Oh, now I need help because uh, so is it, I don't know how to say correctly. Zoicide. Zoicide, zoicide. It's, this one is beautiful. It's my passion because uh, when I mix with orange, it's beautiful because the orange goes under. I will mix so you can see. And hematite burnt scarlet, also gorgeous, beautiful. Uh, we can produce a lot of textures like in houses or roofs or see here. I, uh, you just, the paint does the job. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's gorgeous. And also it produces beautiful um, light. It's kind of light rose, as you see here. It's almost white, but it's very, very diluted. And it produces this beautiful um, color here. So temperature is something very important. This one I made with this dot card too. Like, uh, first of all, cool colors, then contrast, and then warmer colors. That's the way I think uh, in my paintings, and that's the way I constructed my dot card. So um, I will Celia, make some. Celia, yes. could you show us again the painting of your birth, of your? Yes. <laughs> OK. I'm painting other yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. here I have the dual chrome. I have the elect iridescent electric, but uh, see, I like to paint with this uh, paint after um, several layers of non-luminescent painting. So, um, so the would be the would be the one on top. Would be the last layer. Yeah, that's it. I don't know if it's possible. But I think yeah. See here, and this one I made with all of you during the live stream. Yes, here, yeah, and and here there is the dual chrome. I don't know if it's possible, but uh, I will try. Yes, to see the glitter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's very subtle. I don't like the kind of, you know, it's it's not I don't like. I like, I love crafts, but um, in my work, uh, I I didn't want that this means like a, a craft and a hobby. It's not. And uh, I think that these colors that they they brought a very beautiful shiny but very discreet and subtle you, you understand what i mean i sometimes i don't know if i'm expressing myself but uh well but uh th that's my point it's just a little bit here and there so it brings a uh, vibrancy and a new energy to the painting that's uh uh the, and and now i'm doing this series this series of uh birds there is a one in the oven, but um, I'm using this uh, ir iridescent electric blue and the dual chrome motionic. That's why I chose them because also I can put a little bit of pigment in the dual chrome motionic. But uh, you have to know how to work with them. It's not, I, I you know, I worked a lot uh, to get the result that I have to build layer after layer. And then on top of that, just a little bit of, of uh, the, the luminescent color, like here. Yeah. Gorgeous. And Gorgeous. It's, thank you. It's a little bit of here and there. And uh, it's, uh, it's a, so good to work with it because you see the result. It's yeah. very good. So um, before, I will show you another painting that uh, I always do this torturous so I can uh, teach. This is in Paraty, Angela. This is uh, from last week's uh -huh. festival. How good. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And I made uh, with my dog card here, pyro bread with amethyst because I don't have, I use it to uh, use moonglow. But uh, when I discovered amethyst, it was like love of first sight <laughs> because it has uh shiny it's so beautiful it's like the stone and uh shiny it's so beautiful it's like the stone yeah and uh, it makes me feel good and i think uh, we have amethyst here in brazil all over so it's something that uh it's very important to me to is painting uh with this prima uh line it's a, it's something. It's a privilege having uh, these colors, these paints with the stones. So it's something uh, very, very, very nice. So here I use a the amethyst. So my shadows are shining. <laughs> it's shadows that shine, and pyro hat red here, and uh, what the hematite palette. I try always to reduce uh, the the number of of uh, colors because I think if I work combining them, it will be a harmonic result, right? So here to work with the greens, I use it Rans Hansa Yellow Medium. And serpentine, serpentine green, I'm sorry, serpentine genuine, a little bit of uh, jadeite, and then amethyst. So with uh, all these greens, darks with amethyst. And uh, that's, uh, that's why I choose uh, these dot cards. Greens are very important to me. I have already one, two, three, four, Five there, no, four. But I can uh, build a lot of greens with all of these colors, also the neutral zone. So this is something that is very important to me, building um, a painting with uh, just a few colors, not too much. A little bit of transparent pyrrole orange that color is like my life. It's one of my favorites because it has transparency. It's vibrant and I can mix with a lot of other colors to have beautiful shades of uh, all colors. So um, I will mix here. I paint a lot of fruits. And then when I was choosing my colors, I said, wow, what am I going to do about a lizarine? Because a lizarine, everybody knows it's a fugitive, fugitive is correct, it's in English, fugitive color, And uh, but I need it. So I try to mix colors to have something um, very near and um, the queen rose with transparent orange, they mix very well. And then herbazol violet, which is very important to me too. And then I start to have this beautiful color that's very close to a lizarine. And I can graduate um, adding a little bit more of Queen Rose, which I think, oh, almost the same, but uh, Carbazol Violet. But the, the, the range of colors is something very beautiful. And then I can paint my fruits also, uh, just mixing this three colors here um, for texture. So it's a, oh my God, sorry, Zoizite so so <laughs> with, uh, yeah, always, always. 
changing languages you think in one then you oh my god now here yeah beautiful i love it i'm kind of fat because i love it it's really nice for texture also uh to make uh to to paint a foreground like uh on a landscape it's beautiful because it has a lot of texture and it looks like the orange goes under the uh, the surface color. It's beautiful. Also so, here, Sylvia, me... is that is yes. that a mixture between zoocyte and pyrrole orange, pyrrole orange? Or... Yeah. Um, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I didn't say it's a zoocyte and transparent pyrrole pyrrole orange. Okay. Looks, it's uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Now I will mix soy site. oh i'm getting better with the soy site. <laughs> and yes <laughs> it's, it's it's really nice uh with the uh, ultramarine and this is another beautiful surprise look how beautiful this color is i'm playing with my dog card every day <laughs> because uh it's such a beautiful colors Look, it's a wonderful green. Also, I can graduate a little bit more blue and the gray becomes bluish. And it is beautiful. And when it dries, it will be like, like, I don't know if you were, the granulation is uh, amazingly beautiful with these colors. And then uh, bring it I a little just... closer to the camera, please. Okay. Look. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Lovely. Thank you. Okay. Now here, same thing, uh, with hematite, 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 scarlet, um, and a scarlet red, and and transparent pyrrole. Transparent pyrrole orange is a color that I simply have to <laughs> because uh, it's transparent and it mixes with all the other colors. Amazingly beautiful. Look at this. And I am with the cold pressed paper. So it has a little texture and the granulation appears much more. So is that hematite? Oh, hematite burns hem scarlet? Yes, hematite burns scarlet Okay. with a transparent pyro orange. Look at this. I could spend hours mixing all of them because every time I do this, uh, I discover a new one. Look. How beautiful it is. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of a burnt sienna. Okay, burnt sienna um, with uh, granulation. And here it's another mix that I really love. It's jadat, genuine with hematite. Look at this. It looks like an undersea green, but you know, I uh, tried to have colors in my dot card that would uh, complete or at least um, fill all the spaces that the co from the colors that I had before, because my palette was like 30 colors. And then I thought, no, I will find the combination of colors that will uh, that where where I have everything that I need. That's that's where uh, the that was my the way that I thought about it. I know. I think it's a little dark, isn't it? The, so this the, is my um, light. This is uh, jadeite with what other color? Jadeite with hematite burnt scarlet. Oh, hematite, hematite burnt scarlet. scarlet. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. The, the yes. first one, yes. 
I love this. Yeah, they are. No, uh, it's something. And then that's why I use it a lot here uh, to, to this in this uh, painting a lot. Now, more. Do you have, Can do I... you have a painting to show us where you use this color? Sorry? Do you have a painting? Okay, this, uh, this, yes. uh, yes. You show this color? Yeah, this one, I, here. Ah. Okay. See, see, under sea green, it's, uh, it's here. It's not on this, it's, sorry. I, in my head, it, but uh, here, and I like to mix in front because it makes texture, the granulation. Okay. And so, yeah, it's very, it's very, uh, it's very good. And here, I have another one uh, with the same um, same with mixture. the same um, yeah mixture yeah yes and uh, I don't have a green gold but I have uh, Hansa yellow medium with serpentine um, serpentine or serpentine genuine oh mm -hmm. I promise I will work in this. Uh, <laughs> I love in this uh, name in the names of the the colors. Another color out oh, here that uh, I really like is uh, where where is this? sorry that's here. Uh, Excuse me, so we still have three yeah. or minutes left. Okay. Oh my God! <laughs> Only this one. Okay. <laughs> this is um, how about turquoise and. It's very granulated. It the granulation is something that I really enjoy uh, with the ultramarine blue. And for this is for look to paint um, I what water or skies cloudy skies so I think uh, this is beautiful and if I add a little bit of uh, lunar black then it's a beautiful shade of uh, blue gray it's wonderful wow it's amazing isn't it oh look at this it's uh, and uh, it will uh, be like this with this texture so it's uh yeah it's something. So that's um I try to mix everything like here. There's one left that I want to show you because it's something that I really enjoy. It's this one, Hansa yellow with the uh, queen rose, and then a little bit of car basal. Um, sorry. Carbazol violet. And then I have a yellow, kind of yellow ochre. So I can neutralize and then have this yellow ochre, which I don't have in my dog cut, but I have here mixing my colors. Look, it's a beautiful shade of yellow walkery it's gold so we can uh, mix in uh, skies and I love this color it's very very important also here last one okay <laughs> I promise it's a transparent pearl orange yellow oh sorry uh, yeah yeah Hansa yellow and there it is burn umber or whatever but it's a beautiful brown which helps me a lot too so that's the way i choose my my colors uh so the mix Sylvia, is, Sylvia we have a yeah. question here john is asking okay. if you are an architect in brazil so yeah if i what sorry if you are an architect from brazil yes Yes, I am. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. And another yeah. person is asking if you are teaching uh, or, or where to find your classes. How can you 
uh, can they find yes. you if you teach any classes online or do you only teach in Brazil? Yes. No, no, I, I, I teach for Portugal and uh, I teach online and you can call me by the direct in the Instagram. It's easy. I'm always there or messenger from Facebook. Okay, uh, so Sylvia Trapp okay. in Instagram. Thank you. Yeah, 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 Sylvia dot, yeah. Thank you. So, Wonderful. That's it. Wonderful. That's it, my friends. That's my dot cards. Yeah, yeah it's you awesome. Did phenomenal. Both of you did fantastic. It was it was fun watching both of you. So thank you so much. Thank you for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank you. 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 Thank